the housing market has hit 2007 levels, guys. We can't go back to the past. That's right, you heard it, 2007 levels. Now, how is this possible and what's currently going on in the housing market that we have hit this level? Well, we're gonna jump right into it, guys. My name is Orlando, welcome to my channel. Okay, it says here, guys, the housing market just hit a level not seen since 2007. <laughs> now we know how bad it was in 2007. Now let's look at this data to understand what is currently going on in the housing market that would put us in this situation. The financial sting of soaring home prices up 32.6% percent over the past two years was lessened to a degree by historically low mortgage rates during the pandemic. Even as price soared, many buyers monthly payments remained reasonable. Those days are behind us and it is guys. Those days of having those low low interest rates and the housing market shooting up so high, getting 32.6% year over year, those days are behind us, okay? So we need to focus on what is going to happen now and in the future and the past, hey, <laughs> It, it's the past. You want to look at the past to see what's going to happen in the future, but let's not dwell on the 32.6% that people got year over year. Let's not dwell on that because that's not sustainable, guys. That's unsustainable. It's not going to continue to happen. Now that rates have returned to the pre-pandemic levels, Eh, new home buyers are starting to feel the full weight of those record prices. Now, I do agree with that, and that is a good way of looking at things now, guys. Now that mortgage rates are at that 5% plus area now, now all of a sudden, those high prices that people are willing to pay for a house two years ago, all of a sudden, you feel it a lot more because of the high interest rate. I talked about this consistently as we were kind of coming up that the biggest test for the housing market were going to be interest rates. It's all good and dandy when you're paying 50 to $100,000 over asking when you're getting 2.68% interest rate, but at a 5% interest rate, all of a sudden that 50 to $100,000, it doesn't look so attractive at that moment, right? Or when you do the numbers. So let's continue on to see what this says. In December, 2021, the 30-year fixed mortgage rate sat at 3.11%, a borrower who took out a $500,000 mortgage at that 3.11% would have seen a monthly principal and interest payment of 2137. Okay, 2137, that's okay. Now that the average rate is up to 4.72%, it's at five, a new loan at that size would equal a $25.99 monthly payment, guys. Ugh. You see how much that jumped? It basically jumped $450, $450. Now that is huge, guys. Now you have to remember, now I, I just wanna include this, that mortgage payment does not include insurance. It does not include taxes. All of those things have went up since two years ago. And since everything is going up, we talked about insurance premiums skyrocketing, how they're doubling. Two years ago, if it was 1,000, I guarantee if you look at your insurance right now, it's doubled, it's $2,000. If it was 2,500 last year, it's almost four to $5,000 right now. So if you add that into it, you know you pay those monthly along with your property taxes. So that monthly bill that you're doing, especially if it's escrowed, it's gonna be significantly higher now. And now when individuals look at that, they're, they're gonna think to themselves, huh, if I go ahead and buy this house at that 5% plus now, all of a sudden like, now I'm paying almost $4,000 if you include taxes and insurance. All of a sudden like, it may not be as appealing. It goes on to say over a course of 30 years, that's an additional $166,106, ugh, crazy. This swift jump in the mortgage rates puts home buyers in a worse position, a worse position since 2007, guys. At least that's according to Black Knight, a mortgage technology data provider. At the current mortgage rates, a typical American household would have to spend 29% of its monthly income to make a mortgage payment on an average price U.S. 
home. That's according to Black Knight. Black Knight mortgage payment to income ratio, which averaged 19.9 during the 2000, hasn't topped 29% since 2007, guys. Now, this is a big issue that a lot of people aren't talking about. We have increased housing. We have increased insurance. Everything is increased. Gas, grocery bills, inflation is super high. But what's happening to income? income is staying the same. So we have all of these things going up, up, up and up, but income is staying the same. People are making the same amount of money that they were making back then, but the prices of everything goes up. Why is that? Uh, right, right? So people are paying 29% of their income towards their housing. When I look and I speak to individuals, it's normally higher than that 29%. Now, if you go into underwriting, underwriting normally won't allow you to go over a certain amount of the mortgage debt to income ratio. And most people are around that 35% area. Sometimes people get exceptions to go into that 40 area, which I do not recommend. <laughs> there is no way you should be spending 40% of your income towards a mortgage or housing, but you know, that happens. In the renting market, I can see that happening very, very easy and people doing that, but that is not the optimal situation that you want to be in. But 29%, guys, we haven't seen something that high since two. 2007. Now, what does this mean for you guys? You guys are listening to me talk about this and you're thinking, what, Orlando, what does this mean? Well, you have to look at the signs, guys. If you see that income has in rows, but everything else is increasing, people are spending more money on housing than they did in 2007. And then also we're in a worse situation than we were in 2007. This is a red flag, guys. This is a scenario where you look at this and you go, you know what? I see this, I see this. This will show me how I need to move in my next couple of steps. That is what this is for, to give you guys an outlook for you guys to look at this and go, you know what, should I buy? Should I stay? Should I rent? Should I sell? You make that decision on your own, but you use this information to make that decision. There is a growing course of housing economists rooting for soaring mortgage rates to pull some steam out of the housing market. In their eyes, the rate of home appreciation is simply unobtainable. Now we know this guys, there's no way we could continue to go up 32 something percent year over year guys, that is insane. And if you were a part of that and you sold your house, great man, awesome, you know, but the truth is, is that having housing prices continue to go up and up and up like that, it's great for sellers, but for buyers, it's catastrophic. It's something that you cannot keep up with. And if you thought you got into this housing market thinking that appreciation was going to continue to grow like that, you're going to be disappointed because it can't and it won't. <laughs> And if it continues beyond 2022, the housing market risks getting overheated. They'd rather we slow a sustainable uh, level of growth rather than risk a bursting bubble. A paper published last month by the Federal Reserve said that there are signs of a brewing U.S. housing bubble. I did a video on that, guys, about the government talking about there is a chance, which is a red flag, guys, a red flag. <laughs> if you got the Federal Reserve telling you there's a chance of a bubble bursting, you should probably probably take a look at that. The idea that soaring mortgage rates would pull some steam out of the market makes sense. After all, it's an economy shock to demand side of the market. Raising rates not only price some buyers out, they also mean some borrowers who lend their strict debt to income ratio will lose their loan eligibility. Now, I was talking about that earlier in a couple of videos about one of the thing. When interest rates goes up, your buying power, it decreases your buying power, guys. So interest rates goes up, now suddenly you can only afford a $180,000 house, but at the 2.68 rate, you could afford a $300,000 house. It is all based on your monthly payments and what your debt to income ratio is. So if you, for all of a sudden, you know, are priced out of this market based on interest rates, then 
you know, some people are taking, uh, are sitting out and saying, you know what, maybe this isn't the time for me to buy a house. Maybe I'm gonna go ahead and stay in this rental market, see how this plays out, and then jump into this market. But the way that this market is going, you can see the signs of it going towards a bubble, a recession. I think that there's just no way that we can really avert a downturn and recession. We have continually gone up, up, and up <laughs> in all sectors of the market, stocks, housing, everything has continued to go up. Inflation is at all. And everything is going up and up and up. So something has to happen to turn this around, to bring prices down, to bring, you know, all of this money and settle, settle, settle down, guys. So once again, hopefully, guys, you can use this information that I'm giving you. Use it for your research. Use it to make a decision on if you should do this, that. And hopefully this gave you, uh, you know, a different outlook on something that you may not have thought of. And that's what these videos are for. Once again, Again, it's not a doom and gloom video. It's just to give you more insight on what's going on in the market so that you can make the right decision. I mean, as you watch this next video here, it will help you learn all about this crazy housing market, everything about real estate and get into your first rental property. And also check it in the description, our membership program. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.